Since arpeggios come naturally to brass players, and I view the bassoon as a camouflage instrument in ensembles, I like to use this etude as an imitation exercise to strive for the precision and fluidity of a brass musician playing arpeggios. Keep your embouchure steady, and take full advantage of the staccatos to set each note exactly where you want it, but the ultimate goal is to make it sound natural and easy. I use venting and flicking religiously in this etude to make sure every note speaks clearly. Quick moving staccato arpeggios can reveal a lot about your precision of fingerings and air support, so venting and flicking are a huge help to guarantee success. Another tip to consider is not using the whisper key for the C octave leaps in the second half of the etude. It's impossible to use the whisper key lock here since you move quickly up to notes too high for the whisper key but it is possible to give your thumb a little extra time to get back in position after that low C by waiting to execute the whisper key until the E. As long as you're maintaining an open vowel for both C's, the lack of the whisper key on your middle C shouldn't be a problem. Every two beats, you'll find what I like to call anchors. Anchors are notes, usually at the beginning of a note grouping, that serve as a foundation for the notes that follow it. If you play this note solidly correct, the notes after will flow naturally, but if the anchor is in any way imperfect, the notes after will have more of a tendency to crumble. The importance of these anchors lies in the chords we are playing. Try playing only the anchors, usually on beats one and three. Do you notice something that might resemble a bass line if this were scored for a full ensemble? Try leaning on these anchors and making them more important than the arpeggio as a whole. This will solidify your performance and create a foundation for your listener, almost as if they could pick out those anchors from the music as they listen. This can be a particularly useful technique if you play a lot of second bassoon. While I was practicing with this etude, I found myself rushing like crazy. It may look simpler and more repetitive than most etudes, but in order to achieve ultimate precision in note accuracy in speaking, intonation, and articulation, I played this at quarter note equals 100. The etude is labeled moderato after all, signaling to me that this shouldn't be solely a speed exercise. Practice with a metronome as much as possible and find where you might have a tendency to speed up so you can anticipate that in performance. Essentially, we want equal space between every single note to make this etude flow naturally. <laughs> 